first guest is the most well-known woman on the planet. She has won every award humanly possible. Her new album, 
No, because I've kind of talked to my friends about it, and before I got the second cat, I was really c kind of canvassing everyone I knew, going, is cats cat lady? Or, you know, two cats is, ca is cats. Uh -huh. And there's more than, more than one. more than one cat. You know? But they're like, no, three cats is a cat lady, two cats is a party. Yeah. <laughs> I like that philosophy. I still feel like next time you come visit us, you'll have a third cat. I just, what if there's those two made a baby cat? They, they're, they're girls. They're both girls. <laughs> Sure? And they're spayed. Are you sure? It's a miracle. <laughs> you never know. And cats find a way of introducing new cats to the inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and, and, and you turn 25 in December, on December 13th. Wow. Wednesday. Wow. I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't really planned that far out. It's like, it's kind of weird, like, when you're so excited about something, like, I was so geared up for the album launch and so excited about it. It was two years in the making. Right. And so in my mind, I'm like, birthdays happen every year. Like, album launches only happen every few years. So I, I went and did that, and I'm still on this promotion tour, and so I... It's so far back on my list of priorities that I'm turning 25, no, which is a big, that's a big one. It's the quarter it's so, century Isn't mark. it so good if you're so busy actually living your life that you don't even really realize that you have like a birthday coming up? I think that's much more fun. I still feel like you need to have a big party. I should have you a big have party. A big party. You're right. We need I should to give it some be thought. on the I'm invite lovely. list because yeah. yeah. we are we are. We're good time Charlies. Yes. Good we time are, Charlies. No, we, are, we, are par we are party people. Cool. We could have been party motivators on the bar mitzvah circuit. Seriously. You can still do that. I can still that's do that. That's and not I, a dream and that's, that's out of reach. that's not out of the realms of future and employment. I do, and, I, and I do like your philosophy to live your life every day. But don't forget my birthday, people. <laughs> don't forget it. And, um, but what I, what I heard about, you're, you're avid baker, too, so you can cook yourself a cake. I could cook myself a cake. I could bake myself any kind of, like, bevy of cupcakes, cakes, cookies. It would be a whole thing. And my friends like to bake, too. So that could be the party. It would just be a baking extravaganza. I kind of like that you have this normal group of girls. You all hang out and bake cupcakes together. It's almost unheard of. It's almost like you're from 19... 50. But here, living here, showing us how to live a better life. Well, I, I think that, like, yes, they are normal, but they're, but they're, they're not really normal. They're like, they're like this, just the same kind of weird as me. You just have to find people who are the exact same kind of strange, yeah. and then it makes things feel normal. I feel like if, I just wish you had been born 25 years before you were born so we could hang out, because I'm... <laughs> rules here. I this know, I know, but you know. Yeah, like we'd have kids at the same time and we'd take them on play dates. Right. Like yes. I could, yeah, I see but I'll, I can watch you guys. I'll watch you guys. Like, ba like, like, like babysit. Like babysit. Yeah. <laughs> I literally am thinking about what you said about your friends. You got to get friends that are the same weird. And I'm going, my friends are really weird. Am I really weird like that? Swift and New Year's. You have a big New Year's coming up. You're gonna you're gonna headline the the New Year's Rocking Eve in Times Square. That is That's so exciting. All those people. Yeah, I've done it before. I've done it a few times before, but um, th there's something so exciting about it this time, having been in New York now. And you know, I. I'm just so stoked about it. Like, I can't wait. I have all these just, like, I had this, like, song called Welcome to New York, and it was my dream yeah. since I wrote the song to play it in Times Square on New Year's. So hopefully I'll get to play that song, and hopefully there will be confetti and, like, glitter, because that's how I see it. Yeah, so when you see, so you have a vision of how it goes down, right? Yeah. And, and, and how uh, instrumental are you and, I guess, powerful are you to actually put it in, make to make it happen? happen the way you want it to happen well the, the cool thing about being a songwriter is that everything that I do stems from what I write mm -hmm. so uh, the album that I write I then decide what the what the photos and what the imagery is going to be surrounding that album what the content of the album is depicts what our Taylor's
There was a point where Meredith, um, she was the first cat that I got. Mm -hmm. She got, I, I'd post pictures of her on Instagram and stuff, and she was a really beautiful kitten. Um, so she became named like the year end top celebrity pet. I think on some level she knew because she changed after that. She started, started smoking. You came home and she had a cigarette in her palm. Less, less likely to frolic, more yeah. likely to brood and just yeah. stare at me. Yeah. Like I don't matter. Do you think when you got uh, the second cat, Meredith was like, Psst, you know who our owner is? <laughs> No, the other cat is no. just like, da, 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 da. <laughs> like she's just wandering around, like you. singing, dancing to the beat of her own drum, walking into walls. <laughs> the other cat is very different yeah. than the first cat, who's very calculated. <laughs> oh my they God. Say, they say fame changes cats. That's what I heard. That's what they say. And, um, you, your, your new CD, 1989. It was the year you were born. And but how long did it take for you to make this CD? It took two years to make the album. So two years to make the album. Yeah, wow. I like to really put the I, I like to put time into it because it usually starts out as something very different than the way it ends up. Mm -hmm. um, and what this ended up being was a completely different direction musically than I'd ever gone in before. And I knew I knew I had to do that. I knew that um, I had to change things up. I had this kind of I had this feeling like. I needed to explore different things, and with this album, I'm so glad that I took the time to do that and land somewhere where I really was proud of the album. Do you dream your lyrics? Yes. You do? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, no, but only, only in a few circumstances. It happened once on a song called All You Had To Do Was Stay, which is on my new album. Uh -huh. um, and you'll hear in the chorus, when you go into the chorus of this song, it, you hear this high-pitched, like, stay! Like, yeah. it's this, like, stabbing screech sound right. and that was a sound that I heard in a dream because I was I was in the dream I was trying to talk to somebody and all that would come out of my voice was that sound and I was embarrassed it was like a social humiliation dream oh. and I was so embarrassed that I woke up and I was like haunted by the sound I was like why what that's the weirdest sound but it was the word stay screeching high-pitched and so the next day I went into the studio and wrote a song and incorporated right. that into the chorus and, and just like in that that notepad that you write all your lyrics down in from the commercial? I always I mean, wonder if yeah, it's like, do you have a, a notepad? Usually I'll go for my phone, um, uh -huh. but sometimes when I'm writing in my journal, I get a lyric idea and I write it in my journal. It's just, if you get an idea, like, you know, I've written songs when my phone is dead yeah. and I'm in an airport and I get a lyric idea and I know I'll forget it if I don't write it down, so I'm just like running to the airport bathroom to write on a paper towel. Oh my like, gosh, I love your process. It's, it's really interesting. Interesting. Well, let me tell you what, you're amazing at it, and yeah. please keep doing it. We love it. We love it. Yeah. And Taylor Swift's new CD. Next, our first guest is the most well-known woman on the planet. Yeah. She has won every award humanly possible. Her new album, 
Jackson good. Jackson light up a Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> what about all your other awards? Where do they go? Well, I just, I mean, some of them are in my mom's house. Like, some of them are in Nashville. You just kind of spread them out. It's kind of crazy to actually conceptualize the fact that I get to decorate with awards. But. I kind of like your whole approach to your career, though. Yeah. I mean, you really have, you've done the unthinkable. You started out as a kid, writing your own music, performing, and you've not screwed yourself up. Oh, thank Tell you. Us. Thank Tell you. Yeah. It gives us mothers raising daughters hope. Wow. Well, you've, you've done a really good job of kind of maintaining integrity and, and still being fun and fun to watch. I no, really... I'm, a, I'm a hot mess. Oh. <laughs> wow. But what, what I'm curious about is all these things in, in your life. What is a typical day for you when you're not performing and just in New York City being a New Yorker? Well, I've been, uh, I've been working a lot because I just had an album come out called 1989. Yep. Yeah. So it's been like... So sometimes um, when I have a day off, it's my first day off in three weeks or something. And so I'll just, I'll plan it weeks ahead. Like, I am not leaving my bed. Right. I'm not leaving it. I'm not even getting up. Like, I'm just going to order food. I'm going to somehow just make the food come right to my bed. Right. How am I going to figure that out? I'm going to come up with some sort of trolley system. That's the great like, thing about New York. You can have food delivered directly at any time. to your bed. I know. Any kind of food. Now, of course, 1989, you uh, wrote this um, album and called it 1989 in honor of the year I moved to New York. Isn't that true? Exactly. <laughs> Wikipedia yeah, search, and there right. it was, Thank all that information. So we don't, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about the album, and, and you're going to tell us about the two loves of your life. I can't wait to hear that. We'll have more than Taylor Swift in a minute. Stay right there. And um, you, you have two loves in your life. Tell us about the two loves of your life. Um, one is Meredith, and one is Olivia, and they are cats. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I kind of love these cats. They look, oh, yeah, there they are. It's still score. Just um, staring me down from the shoes. Trying to pick out which shoes to wear for the day the cat yeah. is? Yeah, that's the other one. That's Olivia. Olivia. <laughs> she has a hard time closing her mouth. Is it's really weird. Is that a special weird. breed of cat? I've that's, never... They're Scottish folds. That's why their ears are kind of like folded over. They look like owls. They're very... So what is... And they're very emotional cats. And I, and I love the name. Where did the names come from? <laughs> um, I named Meredith after Meredith Grey on Grey's Anatomy. Oh. And because, uh, you know, Dr. Meredith Grey. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I named Olivia after... Detective Olivia Benson on Law and Order Special Victims Unit. So. And two pot belly pigs named Michael and Kelly be far behind. I mean, you you can't really rule anything out at this point. Okay. But are, are you worried that somebody goes, oh, she's a crazy cat lady? No, because I've kind of talked to my friends about it, and before I got the second cat, I was really c kind of canvassing everyone I knew, going, is cats cat lady? Or, you know, two cats is ca is cats. Uh -huh. And there's more than, more than one. than one cat. You know? But they're like, no. Three cats is a cat lady. Two cats is a party. Yeah. <laughs> I like that philosophy. I still feel like next time you come visit us, you'll have a third cat. I just... What if there's those two made a baby cat? They, they're, they're girls. They're both girls. <laughs> Are you sure? And they're spayed. Are you sure? <laughs> it's a miracle! <laughs> You never know. And cats find a way of introducing new cats to the inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and, and, and you turned 25 in December, on December 13th. Oh, okay. Did you have a party? I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't really planned that far out. It's like, it's kind of weird. Like, when you're so excited about something, like, I was so geared up for the album launch and so excited about it. It was two years in the making. Right. And so in my mind, I'm like, Bert Max, our first guest is the most well-known woman on the planet. <laughs> Clip. 
I just saw the, the, the Halloween thing was amazing. I'm so, thank you for uh, coming and doing our show even after the Halloween thing. I legitimately could not believe you did that. It was so well done. It was so well executed, like the same costumes. Thank you. I'll be honest with you. Amazing. I'll be honest with you. Some of those costumes they had me in for the piece were a little different. <laughs> Stretchy material. Stretch, stretch, stretch. A little material. revealing. Yes. You're, you're welcome, America. <laughs> and we, um, we love you here. I've got to tell you, and you are a New Yorker now, and we feel a sense of pride about that. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. We'll try. Do, do you have enough room in your New York apartment for all these Grammy awards that you have? Yeah. You know, it's actually, it's, they're, they're easy to fit. They're quite compact. Uh -huh. They're heavy, but you can just line them up on the mantle. It's really good. That's a good thing about Grammys is they just, just line them up. put them anywhere, the really. You just put them there. Oh, that's it's just good. a line up of Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> what about all your other awards? Where do they go? Well, I just, I mean, some of them are in my mom's house. Like, some of them are in Nashville. You just kind of spread them out. It's kind of crazy to actually conceptualize the fact that I get to decorate with awards. But. I kind of like your whole approach to your career, though. Yeah. I mean, you really have, you've done the unthinkable. You started out as a kid, writing your own music, performing, and you've not screwed yourself up. Oh, thank Tell you. Us. Thank you. Yeah. It gives us mothers raising daughters hope. Wow. Well, you've, you've done a really good job of kind of maintaining integrity and, and still being fun and fun to watch. I no, really... I'm, a, I'm a hot mess. Oh. <laughs> wow. But what, what I'm curious about is all these things in, in your life. What is a typical day for you when you're not performing and just in New York City being a New Yorker? Well, I've been uh, I've been working a lot because I just had an album come out called 1989. Yeah. Yes. So it's been like. So it's been a lot, it's been kind of hectic, so some